Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to give you a quick overview of how I use the liquify tool to create facial expressions and add a little bit of dimension to otherwise flat drawings. You can see it in action right here, so let's get to it. Okay, I want to show you guys a quick technique that I'm doing. It doesn't always work, but it can be pretty handy, and this is using the liquify tool to actually create facial distortions that might be useful for very simple movements. These can be stacked in many many different ways so that you can create like slight head rotations this is without having to get into 3d or anything like that or even facial expressions with a very flat and limited drawing i'm just going to turn this one off for now because I, I like how it turned out but i'm going to show you what i did essentially i have this head composition right in here where i've got all my little layers that make up this head eventually this character will blink and make facial expressions but I've got to move quick on this particular character, so the thing i got to do now is... I also have a puppet tool on there. We're not going to worry about that right now. Let's turn that off. All right, so to uh, demonstrate this technique, let's get a liquify filter put on here. And I've got the push brush here. And you can hold down control and drag to the right or left, and that'll change the size of your brush. I usually start pretty big. I want her head to kind of look away from us. I can't do much about bringing her head looking towards us because I just don't have a lot to work with here. Um, you could do a little bit, but not much. Like, there's really not much to work with. So you could have the slightest suggestion of her turning her head towards us, maybe a bit. Even then, it doesn't look that good. Um, let's put this, put this back to 100. Actually, another good way to do this to scrub through is just to put the, the distortion to 100 and then animate it down to 0. And that way you can scrub through scrub through it easier and see what you're doing. But the uh, thing about the face turning towards us, it's not, it's gonna, it, it'll be tricky. I mean, it, there, it's possible, it's possible. But a anyways, I'm going to reset this one. Basically, the easiest one right now is to have the head look away from us. We can always, we can, either, we can try multiple, multiple ways of doing this. So um, I'm gonna just push this nose in a bit, push the brow in. I'm going to make my brush even bigger. Make the head come in just a touch. And then this eyebrow area come out. This is moving in. Now the eyebrow would move closer to the edge of the head. So let's get down to a smaller size here and bring this in. And then what I'm going to do, scale this up and then, oops, scale it down. Push this, push this tip in a bit. Okay, and the eyes out. And then really the cheeks really come out here and plus she's a little girl so she's gonna have a lot of face a little a little bit of facial fat on her so her cheeks are gonna be big and that nose is moving too much so pull it out a little more there we go bring it down a touch it's not like this method is you it's it's a great little cheat but you do really have to understand a bit of the motion I mean it's gonna be it's going to be hard to really get it just right. It's just not that possible. But if you if you have a sense, like a sort of an understanding of faces, you can you will find a way to cheat this a little bit, and, it, and it'll look okay. It's not going to look perfect. This is coming up too much. I want to give some volume back to that nose. Okay, and this is the nose is also coming down a little too much here. So bring that up. There we go. Starting to get something here. Let's bring these cheeks in. Bring these lips in a bit. Now with her lips, it would they would jump out a little more there, I think. Anyways, I'm looking at a I am looking at a I have a sculpture beside me of a person's head, um, an anatomical reference, and I'm just sort of looking at it too, just to make sure that I'm honoring the curves of what actually happens in a face when it rotates. Like, um, oops, there we go. I mean, you don't have to. You don't have to be dead exact. It, it doesn't matter that much. And the other thing I do know is I'm not going to see the join of her neck. All this stuff back here, I'm not going to see it because the hair is covering it. So I don't want to spend too much time working with that. I don't want to get too carried away. So there we go. And let's do a little bit. Let's get a little bit of shape change on her forehead. There we go. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Almost there. I'd say for like the amount of time it takes to do this, 
depends on your skill level and your comfort, but it can be significantly faster than going 3D, especially if you really don't need 3D. And let's see, that is the thing, is like you really want to be, you want to pick and choose your battles with 3D because it's not always the best choice. So now what I want to do is her face is coming forward a lot, and as her head rotates back, what should happen is this should slide back a touch, I feel like. I want to keep the head anchored to this point here, so I, I, right now it feels like the face is growing forward a little bit. So I'm going to size this brush up a lot. Um, and first I'm going to save. Like you can create duplicates and backups of your stuff if you worked really hard on something, and just then start modifying that. So if you want to, if you want to save this one, you can sort of just keep it like that, and then keep going with this one. And then, then you won't lose your stuff if you're worried about losing some of your wonderful work. Okay, so let's see how that feels. It's better. Might be a little too much, but mm. maybe a touch too much, so let's go pull this out just a bit. The thing is, is I think what's happening now is I'm starting to notice a bit of slowdown. So it's probably because I have so many of these. But I'll get rid of this. I'm going to get rid of this old one. This one's definitely better. Get rid of that guy because that's good. There we go. Okay, so there we have a, we have like a a nice little head turn. Now what we can do with this is this can now be used and paired with a slider to to create a head turn control really. Now this I haven't set this character up for this specifically yet, but what I'll do is I'm going to pull this head over here, and we can go back to Natalie, the Natalie puppet, and go into her head control here and. We can just, um, let's add a new expression. And we'll just call it, we'll do an angle control, I guess. And we can call this, like, head turn. And the other thing we could do, actually, we could actually, just if we want to keep things simple, I mean, I don't know if this will, we can tie it to the rotation of this. This makes it so we don't have to, like, go into the slider and animate it manually. So what I can do is take the distortion percentage here and tie it directly to, oh, let's go back to Natalie. We gotta get to this controller here. So we're gonna press R, there it is. So I can tie it directly to the um, head C rotation. So I'm gonna call this head C rotation equals. So I'm creating a little vari variable there. And then now what I can do is, um, I've grabbed the value, so now I understand it. Now what's gonna happen is we want it to respond fairly quickly. So we want to take take this and then add head C rotation and probably times 10 because I want one degree to feel like 10 10% 10 or something like that. But it might be a bit strong, but we're, we'll find out. We'll find out. So let's go like that. Cool. Simple. Uh, let's go back to Natalie. And let's just see what happens. It's gonna look weird right now because her hair her hair is not set up to like look like it's rotating. But there you go. We have some pretty pretty subtle head rotation happening right there. So now let's just do an animation example. Is if we take this rotation value here, and then we take its position value, and let's just do a one second. This will be like a one second move. So that's 100% because we're at 10 degrees. Now once the hair is properly rigged up to create the rotation, you can see we have a, just a nice subtle rotation. And that was all just done with the liquify tool. One last thing with the liquify tool as well is you can create, so let's just go here really quickly. You can stack them. Uh, I don't. There is a point where it starts looking really weird, but you can stack them and do a uh, facial expressions. So let's just go here. So for instance, control. What is going on? All right. We can make her eyebrows come down a bit. Oh, I'm just going to turn this guy off for now, so I can move a little faster. So I'm going to take her eyebrows down, and then we'll put this to zero. Let's have a look. I think we should. Where is this? Okay, let's have a look. Da, 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 da. Turn this filter back on. 
you can you can still raise her eyebrows. So if you see these eyebrows are coming up and down, you can stack it with the head rotation, and it still maintains a certain level of that control. You see. So now you can do different facial expressions. And it's really about the order. You can do this one first so that the eyebrow, for instance, you can do it first so that the the mesh distortion applied after it, it is actually working with this distortion that's already happened. And we can, let's just for sake of, um, you can start naming them. So, I mean, you could call this like eyebrows. Oops, eyebrows, eyebrows. And then you could have another one, and then that could be mouth, like mouth or something. It could be the mouth one. I'll just turn this off for a moment. I'm going to do one more. I'm going to tie the eyebrows with the mouth, just because I just for the, it's just this. It's just more for demonstration. I don't want to take too long on these videos. Okay, so now we have eyebrows and mouth. So we have this, and now what we can, you can see is that we have a little bit of an expression happening in the face. And this too can be tied to a slider, obviously, just like just like what we just did. So it gives you a little bit more control over the characters. It looks a little nicer. Uh, on top of that, you can apply the puppet pin, the puppet tool to this. So not only do I have a head rotation happening, but I can also pair this up with the puppet tool. Things are starting to act a little bit slow, but I mean, it's not necessary for this particular character or, or for this spot, but it's stuff you can do. I mean, you can stack all this stuff up really nicely, and it will it will work really well. Okay, I just want to show you really quick. I finished up the head, and I actually added some movement to the hair. So now the hair is tied to the rotation of the head control object as well. So you can see that it actually looks pretty good. If we take a look at what's happening with the hair, it's just a whole bunch of layers. And all I'm doing is actually affecting its X position based on the rotation value of the head control object. So if I rotate it, it actually adds its rotation value to the X. And then I've got this influence variable, and that's just multiplying it out. So it, it gives me a multiplier to increase the value if the hair is closer to the camera versus further away. So then I can just use the same code and just change that influence value for the whole thing to achieve this really nice three-dimensional look. All right, just to finish up, I want to show you some examples of the liquify tool at work in Orphan and the Polar Bear directed by Neil Christopher a film we did last year this in this character here you can see the eyebrows are done with it including the nose and that slight sense of dimension that's happening is actually driven by the liquify tools you can see his face has a dimension to it but it's really cheated this character here is a mix of freeform where the head is mapped onto a very slightly curved surface but all of the eyebrow movements and the eyes and the cheekbones and the nose is done with a liquify tool and they're just sort of layered on top of each other so that effect is actually driving it the mouth is actually puppet pins combined with a couple of other things and the hair is puppet pins so all of those things are working together to create this actual face which i still think is a bit stiff this character here his his face was actually done with the liquify tool so the nose and the sides of the head the ears are being done with puppet pins but then but everything happening inside the face and the nose is the liquify tool and then on this guy this is a pretty good example for me this was again all the liquify tool on the face except for the ears this is giving that ability for him to shake his head back and forth as he as he gets bugs off his ears or whatever else so all of this movement combined with the puppet tool and liquify creates a, a really nice character that was taken from a flat two-dimensional drawing all right, I think that about does it for this one. If you guys have any questions or comments or have ideas of how this could be done better, just leave your notes in the comments below and we'll try our best to get back to you. We have a lot more coming, so hang in there and thanks again for watching.